It's nice and loud. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting. Um, the board has already met in executive session, and we did the salute to the flag in there. So we're up to the roll call. Can we have a roll call, please, Mr. McLaughlin? Mr. Burr. Here. Ms. Schaefer. Here. Mrs. Gray. Here. Mr. Salmon. Here. Mrs. White. Here. Mrs. Richmond. Here. Mrs. Corn. Here. Mrs. Woldridge. Here. Mr. Mark Carey. Here. Mr. Syatt. Here. Mrs. McCune. Here. Madam President. Thank you. Um, we're up to the statement of public notice. Um, it's in your agendas. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Education of Berners Township. Notice of the time and place of this meeting was provided, and copies of that resolution were forwarded to the official newspapers and to our township clerk, and a copy of the notice was posted on the bulletin board in the Board of Education office. We welcome public input from, we welcome input from the public. There are two times during regular meetings that input from the public um, is taken. The first is early in the meeting before the board votes on items, when you may speak about any item that is on the board agenda. Towards the end of the meeting, there is another public forum to address any matter of public concern related to the schools. When you approach the microphone, please state your name and address. Each statement made by a participant shall be limited to five minutes. No participant may speak more than one time during a given public comment section. In order to run an efficient meeting and allow maximum opportunity for members of the public to speak, the board reserves the right to set a time limit for additional comments, for individual comments. Um, all statements should be directed to the presiding officer. No participant may address or question board members individually. Please understand that public comment portions of our agendas are not structured as question and answer sessions, but rather they are offered as opportunities to share your thoughts with the board. The board may or may not respond to public comments. Any board responses to public comments will generally be addressed during board forum or during committee reports. However, all comments are considered and will be investigated and addressed as appropriate. Please be courteous and mindful of the rights of others when speaking. Comments may not, may not be abusive, obscene, threatening, or irrelevant. Please understand that students and employees have specific legal and privacy protections. The board is not permitted to respond in public to comments about students and employees. Please also understand that the board will not be responsible for the, comment by the, for the content of comments made by members of the public. Members of the public are cautioned that they are speaking at their own risk and may be personally and any personally directed statements they may make may make them subject to any legal liability um, to the affected individual. Um, if it is necessary for the board to go into an executive session at the end of the meeting, we'll provide an estimated time for that session and whether any action is anticipated to be taken upon returning to public session. Okay? We're up to student representative Hamadi, who I don't see right there. Um, so I thought I saw her before, no? There were so many students here. I guess I didn't. Okay. Um, we're going to go down for the board presentation at this point. Um, the, the handouts. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nick Markarian. I'm the superintendent. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to start tonight with a presentation from Dr. Jane Costa from Oak Street Elementary School. Dr. Costa? Good evening, everyone. I'm here to talk about an initiative that we started at Oak Street School called Arts Integration. When the SIP committee got together, the SIP committee is a school improvement uh, panel, and they are, the committee is comprised of teachers, myself, and Mr. Graber. And what we do in September is take a look at what our professional development needs are as a school. And when we gathered in September, 
we found a quote that really resonated with us. And the quote was, and this, is, this quote is by Phyllis Rashad. She is an actress and a dancer. And she wrote, before a child talks, they sing. Before they write, they draw. As soon as they stand, they dance. Art is fundamental to the human expression. So from that, the committee put together we have two goals, but this is the goal I want to talk about tonight. It's the staff will learn how to infuse fine arts into all aspects of the student's day in order to create a balanced curriculum. Well, that was all fine and good, but then we said, how? How are we going to make this happen? So what we did was we put together a creative leadership team. I was able to get teachers, art teacher, music teacher, um, uh, library computers and, and classroom teachers, and we got together to form this committee. And in our research, we did find that um, you, you have to have three components to have an effective integration. And the components are collaboration, research, and intentional alignment. Collaboration was what we were doing as a committee, getting together uh, every other month to come up with ideas. How are we going to make this happen? And then we looked at the research. What is the research out there? Is it really important that we integrate the arts? And we did find that the research in arts education finds that weaving related arts throughout the school day not only boosts academic achievement, but also promotes creativity, self-confidence, and school pride. And as I said, the integration requires collaboration, research, and intentional alignment. Uh, I came across an article just the other day that they're finding that when students take notes, if they draw pictures, it increases the retention rate by 50%, which is uh, pretty amazing. So when we talk about intentional alignment, that is, how are we going to make it happen in the classroom? And what the committee is doing is we're looking at ways in which we have the curriculum, we have it in art and music and um, second grade, third grade, and how can we marry the two? So there are ways such as the art teacher can give the second grade teachers ideas out how to use art to teach fractions, uh, maybe even the Civil War. The classroom teacher could go to the music teacher and say, you know, we're, we're studying the Civil War this month. Is there any way you can uh, create an alignment with that, maybe through what was the music like at the time in the Civil War? What were some of the musical instruments that people used in the Civil War? So that's what we mean by integration. Not forming a new curriculum, obviously, but when can we marry it together instead of saying, we're going to art, we're going to music? No, we're going to try to, as much as possible, integrate it. Now, these are going to be baby steps. It's not going to happen overnight, but the committee is very excited about having this happen. The first thing that we did was Music Mondays. And we are exposing the staff and the students to a myriad of different um, genres. So I'm going to show you a short video of our music teacher, Mrs. Reimer. And every Monday, she plays a, uh, a song. Oops, I'm sorry. But yeah, I see that. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. This you just heard was called Dueling Banjos. Did you? You hear the call and response pattern of the banjo and guitar going back and forth. Not only is this a fun piece to listen to, but the performers of the Sleepy Man Banjo Boys are a set of brothers from Lebanon Township, New Jersey, only a short distance from Bosnia Ridge. A side note, the Sleepy Man Banjo Boys also give a nice TED Talk if you're interested in hearing more about them. So remember, when you go home after school today, remember to say, Hey Alexa, play the Sleepy Man Banjo Boys. <laughs> I'm going to mute it now because it just continues a little while longer. It will continue to play in the background. But what we did today was, today was Monday, so it was Music Monday, and she played Sly and the Family Stone, Everyday People. 
And the message with everyday people is that we, we may all be different, but we are the same. And on Friday, we are having our monthly school leadership um, assembly where the theme is about diversity and being kind towards others. So that's where we're making this nice connection and alignment there. Also, every Monday, the teachers give the children a little do now. So they've listened to the music, and while they're still unpacking and getting ready for the day, children in kindergarten and first grade might get this worksheet. And what they're gonna do, they just circle what sounds they heard, what musical instruments, how that music made them feel, and either the teacher will tell them what they should write in that box, or they can, student choice, they can write what they want. So that's the K-1, maybe even sometimes second grade. But as we go into third, fourth, and fifth grade, they are able to have this option. I hear this type of music, I think, and now I wonder. So again, we're connecting the language arts piece of writing with the music. Here are some of the songs that we've used for um, Music Mondays. We've had you know, Jackson 5, we've had Neil Diamond, uh, we had Over the Rainbow by Iz, uh, Harry Belafonte, um, and even some classical music. So we're trying to expose the children to as many different genres as possible. Now recently, Mrs. Reimer had a third grade showcase, which we were very proud of. This was the message that she sent to all the parents, and it was on the um, slide. Every child in third grade participated in this showcase, and they all were able to uh, contribute in a way that they felt more comfortable with. Maybe they were writing script. Maybe they were making posters, so that was the R piece. Maybe they wanted to do the program. Maybe they just wanted to um, be a greeter. So every child had a secondary role in addition to actually singing at the concert. So this was her message. Um, she wanted to create a leadership role in creating an original performance, and she said this was completely student designed. So the third grade teachers worked with her, uh, technology, library, everyone got together and they created this really beautiful showcase. It's just two pictures, some of the children welcoming the parents and they have the programs that they designed, the posters, we were able to use our poster machine and made the posters. Some more uh, children welcoming our parents. Here's a greeter at the door into our auditorium. Another poster. Again, another one. The theme was kindness. Some more posters outside the auditorium. And this was the program. So every parent got to see from each classroom their child and all the other children uh, what they did in addition to singing at the concert which was really nice to see. And there were two forms of this, two uh, vari variations of it. Another poster, kindness is cool, kindness is cool again. And then we also married the, um, the um, art show, third grade students. We used to have a very big art show when we had um, our book fair, but we didn't have that this year. So what we did was we had the third grade art show the day of the showcase, so parents got to come in and see what the children had done. Every child had a piece of art on display. And there's just some more pictures. And this is a green screen I wanna show. It's, it's very, it's quite uh, involved. The kids did a nice job with this. And it's a green screen. They're not really in that classroom. Oh, do I have it on here today? Good morning. Today we'll be learning about the song Imagine. We imagine food! Uh, not exactly. The song Imagine was by the famous John Lennon. John Lennon! <laughs> we love lemons! No, this John Lennon, a singer who believed we should envision a world which more things bring us together rather than separate us. That sounds nice. Let's imagine. So then I'll show you the actual song that the children sang, which was Imagine. Some of them are actually crying because it was such a beautiful sentiment.
Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one. The next song was a Bob, Mar Bob Marley song. Three birds. Don't worry. I'm just going to go to the next. You, you get the gist of it. The children did a really nice job. And then we had a little girl who actually played a little solo. And then... Again, another step in the integration of the arts. We have Wizard of Words coming up shortly, and we also had a family reading night. So what we did, we, we merged two of those ideas together, and we had a door decorating contest. And the children um, in the different classrooms, they designed their own door decoration having to do with the authors who are coming, and this was the winning classroom. And to be continued, as I said, these are baby steps. We know this isn't going to happen overnight, but uh, we just think it's really a great thing to do to take the arts as much as possible and make it into a seamless integration to what we're doing each and every day with the children in the classroom. And I thank you, and I apologize for the, what, the visual, the audio, and the, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Costa. So um, just by way of explanation, for those of you that might not be aware, we uh, made a little transition this year to do um, some school showcases in lieu of some of our uh, student championship recognitions. We wanted to uh, take advantage of the opportunity to showcase what was going on in the schools that wasn't necessarily celebrating a uh, championship victory or or something that uh, in many ways is, is celebrated on its own. So we, we shifted gears a little bit and uh, we're trying to bring some uh, highlights to the board meetings to show what some of the students are doing uh, with the leadership at the school. So thank you for that, Dr. Costa. Okay, so um, moving right along, the, the next item we wanted to report out on was our uh, class size report. We take a, a little bit of a snapshot uh, once each spring as we anticipate the following school year and start thinking ahead to uh, trying to wrap up our budget planning, we take a look at how we're doing with uh, class sizes. Obviously, student enrollment plays a big part in that, and uh, it has an impact each year as we take a look at what's going on with enrollment at the schools in planning for the following school year. So uh, I'm going to be going back and forth here between paper and electronics because it's not showing up on my screen. But that's okay. So uh, Cedar Hill, uh, we'll go each school one at a time, uh, just kind of highlighting the average class size. That's the goal. So to try to give you a sense of our class sizes all the way through 
uh, our elementary schools in the different programs that we're running in the district. So uh, here's an example of where we stand with Cedar Hill School and what we anticipate going forward. Uh, as you can tell, if you kind of take a look at the bottom uh, row there, you'll notice that uh, we anticipate roughly the same number of students next year as we have this year. Uh, and one of the themes throughout all of these slides and this presentation is kind of an awareness that uh, this is March and obviously things change between March and June. Uh, we have two major things going on in the next month or so. One is our kindergarten enrollment that happens at the end of March, coming right up. And also right at the beginning of April, we start to take a look at finalizing what we anticipate to be sectioning for uh, the master schedules at the schools, meaning what students have chosen as part of the elective process. So this gives you a sense of what's going on at Cedar Hill. Pretty much uh, we anticipate uh, about the same number of students and the same number of uh, core sections. Uh, obviously that kindergarten enrollment piece will, pay, will play a, a big part in this. It is the most challenging aspect of uh, anticipating enrollment is that incoming kindergarten class. Once our students are in the school system, it's very predictable from one year to the next with occasional anomalies over the summer. But the most difficult thing to predict is the September enrollment for kindergarten. Uh, even though we have a kindergarten enrollment process that we try to do uh, in the spring, that doesn't necessarily bring everybody out so that we know exactly how many kindergarten students that we are going to have. Here's the sectioning currently at Cedar Hill in special education. And I think one of the things that uh, we've had to clarify in the past is that depending on a student's individualized education program, um, the, the type of program that they're involved in can um, be varied. So they're not necessarily in one particular program. So when you look at these numbers, you have to recognize that some students are in more than one program, so they get counted in more than one place. So you might think of it more in terms of um, the different uh, placements into programs rather than individual students, because some students appear more than once in the counts. Okay, Liberty Corner, same concept. And for now at Liberty Corner, we anticipate that we will maintain 25 sections between the two school years. And that represents the different programs that we have running at Liberty Corner School in special education. And again, this is current year, 2018-19. Mount Prospect core content classes. Very similar enrollment projected for Mount Prospect between this year and next year. Variation of a handful of students. And again, a lot of this is gonna come down to that kindergarten number. Special education programs at Mount Prospect. You can see we have a lot going on there as Mount Prospect School hosts not only our preschool programs, but also our elementary school autism programs. Oak Street. Uh, we anticipate that we may go down a section at Oak Street School. That doesn't necessarily mean there would be a change in full-time equivalents for elementary school staffing because again, we're not sure where we're gonna end up at the other schools. I wouldn't be surprised to see one school go up a section, one school go down a section. Uh, hopefully, it all evens out in the end, we'll have to see. Special education programs at Oak Street. And moving on to the 612 program. Took a look at this a little bit differently starting off by looking at overall average class size within content area. So you see the major programs running at William Annan and Ridge High School, Business, Engineering, Tech Ed, English Language Arts, ESL, Mathematics, 
performing arts, <clears throat> excuse me, physical education and health, science, social studies, special education, visual arts, and world languages. Following the same pattern as the elementary schools, we'll take a look at some of the core content classes at William Annan and Ridge, as well as some of the uh, special education programs at William Annan. We're taking a look at social studies, science, English, language arts, and mathematics in each of the grades, keeping in mind, of course, that once the students get to the middle school and high school, they are moving from class to class. So we're looking at all the different sections of social studies, science, English, language arts, and dividing by the number of sections enrolled with students to get these average class sizes. Obviously, mathematics is the most complicated with the most uh, courses at the middle school, so that's why we had to break them out onto their own slide there. Two different levels of sixth grade math, uh, seventh grade math has two levels, and a cycle class, which supplements the instructional time for math seven. Uh, eighth grade has math eight, eighth grade algebra, and geometry. I included health and PE on this slide as well. Special education programs at William Adam Middle School. And the average class sizes in each of those programs. And finally, elective classes at William Annan. We have our math support, literacy support, world language, average class size of 21. English as a second language is the ESL. Sixth and seventh grade cycle classes, that's where the students rotate through a variety of electives every six weeks. There is one eighth grade social studies elective and the average of the fine and practical arts electives at the middle school is 19. Wanted to share with you the enrollments at the music programs at William Annan, chorus, band, and orchestra at each grade level. And moving on to, <coughs> excuse me, Ridge High School. So for obviously the high school, there is the widest range of opportunities uh, in terms of the courses that the students are enrolled in. So we're taking a look at average class size by content area at Ridge High School in the different courses that the students take as part of their core program. They take social studies. Obviously mathematics. Many, <coughs> excuse me, many offerings in the math program. The language arts program. Again, these would be your core courses that students take. And a wide variety of courses in the science program as well. I know I'm kind of flashing through these. I see some people with cameras. We will certainly post this uh, tomorrow on the website for those of you that want to spend a little bit more time looking at it in detail. World languages, business, and performing arts. These are more uh, elective classes and the average class size. And the much discussed health PE and option two program at uh, Ridge High School. We have uh, some blanks right now uh, as we sort through the spring program in terms of the number of students that are gonna be enrolled in the option two program. Special education programs at Ridge. And a bit of a summary for you. Again, kind of um, getting to some of the things I mentioned earlier, the importance of um, our overall enrollment and keeping tabs on that. So 
Just for a little bit of comparison, I took a look at the demographer's report that we had done in December of 2017 uh, to give you a little bit of a flavor. How did the demographer do in projecting enrollment? He projected enrollment out uh, five years from the time that he had done the report. And he had an anticipated 5,252 students for the 18-19 school year and were at 5,311. So, you know, um, a lot of that, I, I do believe, comes down to that kindergarten enrollment based on looking at the details of what he projected. Um, it's, it's not always a, a simple formula. And then, uh, of course, you can't anticipate necessarily the number of move-ins that are going to happen during the course of the year either. But it was um, in the, certainly in the ballpark uh, between the projection and the current enrollment that we actually had. And just for um, sake of comparison so that you can see, we have overall as a district um, been declining a bit in enrollment for the last uh, four years. And you can see that in the 13-14 school year, um, we were at uh, the highest enrollment was 5,716 students K-12. That's not looking at preschool, just the K-12 program. So as I discussed a little bit earlier, um, I could envision some potential fluctuation between elementary schools, depending on what happens with kindergarten enrollment, the reality of that enrollment, uh, not only at the planned kindergarten enrollment at the end of March, but obviously also as uh, time goes on after March and in through the summer with folks perhaps moving to town. Uh, we did, I did note that, were some, that there were some elective selections that seemed to dip. We know um, why some of that occurred, some of the enrollments in the Project Lead the Way program at the high school. We've been talking about that over the last couple years as well, uh, and the, the opportunity to add other selections to the Ridge High School program of studies going into 1920 to see if perhaps students might prefer other electives and get uh, higher enrollment. Um, and we also know that sometimes what students select at the beginning of the scheduling process doesn't always bear itself out as the year uh, opens up and, and students perhaps make adjustments or drop one course in favor of another. So we do get some swings there and we'll be taking a careful look at that uh, again at the beginning of April this year when we look at those student elective re requests to try to anticipate enrollment in those sections to be uh, consistent through the course of the school year and to try to keep numbers as even as we can going forward with some of those elective classes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when we continue with the budgeting process, which does get finalized in May at the public hearing of the budget, we'll be revisiting uh, how we anticipate things to change with regard to some of our staffing, uh, which is typically sort of finalized over the next couple months. Now, uh, one thing that we obviously are sensitive to, if you've been paying attention to what's going on in town, there are some uh, planned construction projects. And, <clears throat> excuse me, as I noted, at uh, the 2013-14 school year, uh, our current facility held five students, uh, K-12. Uh, currently, we are, we're down about 400 students from that number. So uh, certainly, we are very sensitively watching uh, the anticipated construction to occur in town, and we are working with our demographer uh, as we get final details from the planning board. Um, we should be able to update that demographic uh, report and projection over the summer is my hope if we can finalize the information from the planning board uh, as, they, as they finish things and we can revisit things with Dr. Grip and have him update our last report to see how we stand in terms of uh, the type of uh, enrollment we can expect to occur as a result of uh, new construction in the, in, the, in the township. Obviously that's something important to keep an eye on. Okay, any questions? our board members? I know, riveting class averages to look at, but uh, I will have this on the, the website for you. Uh, a little dry, I'm sorry, but a very important topic nonetheless as we manage our uh, staffing going forward into the budgeting season. So thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's that? Yes, yes. 
<laughs> Thank you. You guys are the best. Superintendent's report. Let me have to wait for you. <laughs> okay, we're up to the superintendent's report. There are two items. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Waldridge, does someone like to second? Mrs. Korn. Thank you. Did you have anything to say? I have something to share, but not on these two items. Okay, so we'll vote on these two items and then you can share. Okay, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne. So this is a, a document that Mr. Side maintains, so I'll ask him to share a bit with you what he does. Sure. So every school district in New Jersey, Mike, is required to conduct a three-year comprehensive equity plan where you look at equality and equity in your programming. So what you do is you have to form an affirmative action team that has to be comprised of at least three members of the school community. They want a mix of teachers, administrators, uh, and you look at three areas. You look at uh, board goals or board goals and or policies. You also look at curriculum, specific curriculum. There's a needs assessment that you do actually on the curriculum and staff development. And you have to ensure that you're in compliance with all federal and state laws. We've done this uh, every three years and uh, I have a team already in place. Um, a couple of our team members are here in the audience tonight. So thank you team. We're gonna get started on that. That is required to be submitted to the county June 14th, but we need permission from the board to start this and you have to reappoint me as the affirmative action officer because I have to chair the team. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, can we have a roll call please? Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Cray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Okay, we're now up to public comment on agenda items. Um, before we get started, um, Mr. Crute was going to um, say a few words. He had said some of this last week, but I think there's different people here this week, so he's going to um, do it again. Yeah, well, I think there was also real problems with the microphone. Yeah, and some people couldn't last hear last week. week. So I think we're, yeah. I, as I understand it, we'll be repeating a number of things yeah. at tonight's meeting from the other time. I, I've been asked just to briefly address at a couple of meetings, some recent issues relating to comments from the public, uh, which included allegations about staff members. Uh, these comments appeared to show a lack of understanding regarding how such allegations are addressed by the district, and they may have given the public the mistaken impression that the board is not listening or that the district is not taking action regarding parent complaints. The first thing to understand that there is a well-defined chain of command in a school district and by law and policy, issues related to staff members must be addressed through the chain of command. This means that they typically should be addressed first with the staff member involved, then at the building level with the principal, then with the central administration. It is only after a matter has been dealt with at the administrative level that it may come before the board for some sort of action. Th this means that if an issue is raised, an issue related to staff is raised by a member of the public, it is going to be referred to the appropriate step in the chain of command for consideration and, if necessary, investigation. Uh, please understand that until an issue comes before the board through the proper chain of command, the board itself is not able to act on it and will not even have much information about it, probably. And there's a similar chain of command with respect to student issues and student complaints. The second thing I'd like to explain is that staff members and also students have privacy rights and legal protections. Therefore, the board is not able to respond to allegations involving staff members or students. 
Although the board can't discuss issues involving staff members or students in public, they also can't prevent members of the public from commenting on them during public participation. But in this regard, I, I'd just like to caution the public that any comments they make with respect to staff members are made at their own risk, as any such statements could be considered defamatory and the affected individuals could, could assert legal claims based on the statements. Finally, I just want to emphasize again that the board is not able to respond specifically to allegations regarding staff or students, but that does not mean that the comments are not heard and are not referred appropriately through the chain of command. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crute. Okay, so I'm gonna open up public comment on agenda items now. If you have something to say that's related to a topic on the agenda, um, please come up and tell us your name and address. Um, you can sign in on the clipboard afterwards, and students don't need to give us your address if you come up. So I spoke to a president once, and uh, I spoke to him the same way I speak to, yeah. Yeah, Joel Goslin. The address is not in town, so I don't think I have to state it. Somewhere in Plainfield. Oh, I'm the French teacher. My students are right there. Can I start now? So, I was saying, I spoke to a president once, and I spoke to him the same way I speak to my students, or the person who cleans my room right here. And at the end, when I was about to, about to leave the stage, the bodyguard called me and asked me, the president wants to talk to you. So that's his wife. I went there, he shook my hand, and he thanked me for how honest and uh, sincere my speech was. And then a few months ago, I spoke to a board of education here. I asked one simple question, how are you? Nobody answered. And then at the end of my speech, I said, do you have any question? Nobody answered. I was taught that respect is a two-way street. And I teach that respect is a two-way street. And yet, you disrespected me then, and you disrespected me again on Friday when I asked you to put my name on the board minutes, and you didn't. I wonder what it is that you're afraid of. So I'm here today because I believe in challenges, and I told you that. Um, I'm here today because I, my challenges are a little bit more serious than the average person, because I challenge myself all the time. And so again, I'm here today because I climbed the mountain despite the fact that you told me not to. I didn't go to sip margarita on the beach. I went and for 20 days I was freezing and for 20 days I had to find the wind. But yet, my students followed me on Instagram, their parents followed on Instagram and I inspired them. And yet I'm sitting, standing here today. I don't know why. But I will keep on inspiring my student because that's my job. And you can keep on inspiring them by bringing inmates and ex-drug addicts to talk to them about, I'm not sure what either. A few things I want to know. I want to know why I wasn't given the opportunity to write the 20-page paper to explain why I'm doing this, because another uh, co-worker did get that opportunity. I want to know why each time I take my students to Quebec and I give away my weekend for free, you don't ask me to come here. I also want to know why when I brought four people from French Guyana to speak at the middle school and the high school for four days, I ran out of money and I took $500 out of my own pocket and nobody could help me with that. So technically, if we do the math here tonight, I think you owe me money and not the other way around. But never know, maybe somebody else needs a bonus at the board of it again. Someone said, someone sitting here, said to me that I have a problem with a system I don't know if you know my resume, but I served three years in the Israeli army and I was a decorated officer, so no, I don't have a problem with the system. I have a problem with people that are narrow-minded, that are not efficient and pretend to do their job. I want to know why I'm standing here today when you have more serious problem, if it's plagiarism among staff or other people that were supposed to be in a place where a bus was in an accident but didn't want to go because they had to get ready for a seminar that you approved and has nothing to do with the job of the person. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of very good administrators here and fortunately you shut them down because they have a personality and you don't like that. You like control and I believe that's the one reason why I'm here today because you said no and I went anyway. 
Um, one, thing, one thing you need to know about me, I have a very good healthy lifestyle and I want my students to learn from it. And so there is no way you can pay me enough to change my personality, not today, not tomorrow, ever. By climbing and riding the way I do, I teach my students something that is not taught in any books. I teach them to not fear challenges, but prepare for them and face them day by day. I teach them to believe in themselves no matter what they choose to do. The importance is to be happy, proud of what they do. What have you taught them lately, besides be hiding behind a lawyer, being disrespectful and not listen? I'm an educator and I do a great job. I'm not sure you know your job. My name is Caitlin Weehy. I live at 49. I would like to, anyways, thank you. I live at 49 Beechwood Road in Basking Ridge. My name is Nora Kaur. I live on 20 Roll Lane, Basking Ridge. My name is Annika Kopchinski, and I live at 38 Tall Timber Lane. I'm Audrika Chetraj. My name is Sri Jahari Srikanth. I live at 12 Hudson Drive. So, let me just start by saying that we are speaking for Madame God's own students who are here and who are not. We want to emphasize that many, many voices have contributed to what we're going to say to you. In fact, it was very easy to write about why Madame is important to us. The majority of our conversation actually revolved around who gets to stand here and fight for her. Though, I'm a, though I am only a sophomore, the impact Madame has made on my life is profound. In the eighth grade, I got to meet a group from South America that she brought and helped sponsor to come here. And I will soon meet native French speakers in Quebec. Ms. Gosden realizes that a textbook will never be able to teach us the unique power of diversity in French, but people can. Because in a world full of hate stemming from ignorance, if a teacher can educate by introducing us to French people from all walks of life, that teacher is one worth praising. To cite the Bernard's Board of Education goals, your goal for 2019 is to strengthen the ability of the staff to promote social and emotional health and well-being. Ms. Goslin already does this by encouraging her students to realize that life is not about waiting to finally be happy, but rather to seek happiness, to seek emotional well-being. And more importantly, we learn to live our own life to the fullest. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a fan of public speaking, but if it came to public speaking or sacrificing some of the most valuable knowledge that a teacher has ever given me, I would speak like this a million times over. For her, educating us and preparing us for the real world goes beyond the classroom. Madame Goslin told us the story of when she interviewed at Ridge for this job. She made a point of going days beforehand to scope out the area and leaving five to six early to make sure she wasn't even late. Even with a two hour delay due to car trouble, she made it to the interview an hour early. Her dedication to her job has further been shown in the time she takes to prepare traditional food for our class and how she constantly encouraged us to step out of our comfort zone and try new things. Anaga, Kat, and I, among others, have had Madame for the last two years, and we wouldn't trade it for anything. She inspires us to speak, she encourages our natural curiosity, and she bursts the Basking Ridge bubble that we live in by exposing us to different cultures and traditions that we, um, and opening our minds. Without her, many of us would not have the respect for different religions and traditions that we now have. Last year, the three of us, uh, along with about 40 other kids, went on an immersion trip to Quebec in which we could only speak French. It was unforgettable. Students, myself included, who normally avoided speaking French as a result of our lack in confidence, were able to converse with native speakers and refused to stop speaking French when we crossed back into the U.S. border. The only reason this trip was as impactful and profound as it was was because of Madame Goslin. This year, when she told us about her trip to climb Aconcagua, we were nothing but supportive. Sure, we'd miss her over the week she was gone, but we were more than excited than anything else. While she was gone, our French class did not stop. She ensured we had a sub that would make us do our work, and oh boy, we did. We had an assessment upon her return as well. So, if you are concerned, as the board, that her absence was a hindrance to our education, let us, the students standing in front of you, and the rest of her students, assure you that no work and our education was not hindered. The trip that Madame Goslin most recently took was not a vacation. It was a test of strength and a battle of wills. These are traits that her students admire and aspire to have. Above all, it was dangerous. 
but what she brought back from her trip, that was experience. She shared videos and pictures and introduced us to such an inspirational woman, all with the intention that we would take away something amazing from it. We learned more from her two-week trip than, the, than from the book that we were required to read by the curriculum. There is something broken with an educator's contract if money is prioritized over the growth and education of a teacher and her students through experience rather than textbooks. That is what the real world is about. That is what you should be inspiring at Ridge. Do not question her actions, but question your own intentions. Is this double jeopardy really fair to take and then take again from her? Gaz once said that we make money to spend it on experiences. She's paid for this experience twice over. Don't make her give more. Quite frankly, Madam Goslin is one of the most unique and dedica dedicated teachers I and the rest of her students have ever had. And without her, our French experience would have, quite frankly, been lackluster. She's a vibrant figure who brightens our rich community. She's not only, not only with her unique background, passion, and dedication to our students, she makes us better people every day while we enter her classroom. You can search for miles and miles, and you will not find a better teacher than she is. So, rather, this is not about the money, but rather how insulting it is that you have suggested, uh, about the penalties you have suggested, and we question your intent as her students. Above all, she gives us real life experiences that inside of a limited classroom environment, which a teacher's salary just simply does not cover. We stand in unison with her. She's not just another teacher, and she's not just number 7593. She is Madame Goslin. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Seema Samtani. I live on 27 Queenberry Way. Uh, I'm here to support Ms. Goslin uh, and dear board members. I honestly don't know a lot about the board rules, uh, school leave policy, or anything. I'm a working mom. I never make it, almost never have been to a BOE meeting before. I've only come to school twice. One was to support her at another meeting, and today it's now. Um, I don't claim to know what's fair, what's not, what your policies are. As a parent, I'm just here to tell you the impact she's had on my child. And that's all I can say. You've heard from the students. They know her better than certainly I do. Right? My son is not here, but as a parent, I want to express something. My son was uh, in middle school French. He did three years of French. While he wasn't struggling, he wasn't doing fabulous either. Um, he got his grades. He was about to change his language as he got to ninth grade because he just did not want to continue French. He did not love the language. Uh, he goes into the grade level French uh, because I insisted. Right? You don't want to change the language. You've been doing that for a while. Uh, and it's almost the end of the freshman year. They've already picked their courses for next year. And he qualified for honors French. He wants to do honors French. He does not want to listen to me if I tell him not to. So that change from wanting to quit French to wanting to do honors French has been inspired by Ms. Goslin. I can't tell you uh, more than that. Right? It's the, the way she's able to inspire the children is amazing. My son would be nowhere close to doing French now. I can tell you that. So maybe, you know, factor that in, in your decision. Be fair. Uh, send the message to our kids that we value fairness, we value our teachers, and we want them to grow and learn, really. Uh, I don't know anything about the mon money, the penalties, but just as a parent, I really didn't have enough time to prepare. I've only ever emailed her twice up until now. One-line emails, where do I need to show up? That's it. I don't know anything more about her personal life, what she does, but. I just wanted to express this, that my child is ready for honors French and the challenges because of her. So I hope you consider that. Thanks. Hi, my name is Mandir Singh, 20 row lane, Basin Ridge. Um, so I've seen some of the things from a little bit afar. Um, and uh, obviously, I'm, um, my, my daughter studies in Ms. Goslin's class right now. Um, one of the things we, when we came here 15 years ago was we looked at the school district. We were very enthusiastic about Ridge. We came here, and the, uh, that enthusiasm has grown. One of the things we found out over here was that not only is the school very good academically, but it's also very good in extracurriculars, sports, etc. And they have a lot of other programs. 
So our enthusiasm has grown. We've actually spoken to other friends about it, told them about Ridge and how the, how the other parts of Ridge uh, High School are really uh, fantastic. And we, our enthusiasm has grown, like I said. Um, I think what I'm hearing now is uh, a little bit the opposite, where you know, here's a teacher, well-liked by the students, extracurriculars, she's actually adding value to the curriculum, to the program. And again, I don't know about the money, and that's a secondary thing to me, at least. But I think from an education point of view, it's a positive. Um, I think decisions taken that are positive can lead to better outcomes. Um, and negative decisions can lead to negative outcomes, not only for uh, Ms. Goslin, but for everybody and the school involved. So I'd like you uh, to think about it. Uh, and if it makes sense to, I don't know which way the decision is going, but if it makes sense to have a positive decision and positive outcome from this. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Samantha Pertnia, one of Madame Goslin's Honors French Three students. I would like to commence by saying that she is a huge inspiration of mine and of all her students. Not only is Madame Goslin a teacher of a foreign language, but she also educates us about our own lives and how to live them to the absolute fullest. She asserts to us that we must follow our dreams, stand up for what we believe in, and achieve what we feel we must in order to live our most fulfilled lives. Going on this trip for her was doing just that, achieving her dreams and aspirations. One must not be condemned for succeeding in completing a life goal. This should be celebrated. One may view Madame Goslin's absence as selfish, as she was out for an extended period of time for a rec recreational activity. However, she completely prepared us for her absence by writing up detailed lessons plans, conversing with our pre-planned substitute to make sure we would still have work to do, and made sure we would still be learning while she was away. To the extent of my knowledge, for Madame Goslin, mountain climbing is not just a thrilling sport and a recreational activity. It is also about challenging herself and striving to reach new heights. Also, she has put so much excitement into the class. I used to despise French. It was just another class I had to go to, but this year it's become my absolute favorite subject. And the grades show it. The excitement normally reflects in the grades. This year I have a good grade in French because I'm so passionate about the class and I just am so willing to learn. I will go home and sometimes just read the French dictionary to just in increase the amount of vocabulary I know to try and just do better in the class. In mine and other French students' opinions, this is more than enough of a reason to, to partake in an absence from one's job. Thank you all for listening. Hello, my name is Iman, um, I'm a student here. So I think everybody uh, has been told how great of a teacher she is. Um, but I just want to start by saying that I moved here from a town not like Basking Ridge at all. Um, very different town and when I told teachers and students where I was from, I got looks, I got comments and I was a minority. So right off the bat, it was a different experience. And I remember this day like it was yesterday, but I walked into her class and she asked me how much French I knew and I told her bonjour and I didn't even pronounce it right. So right off the bat, her teaching style wasn't of the norm, which in all honesty, it helped me so much more than a textbook and an RTN could have helped me. And from her climbing this mountain and all the times I've spent in her class, and to start off, I didn't try in her class when I moved here. I sat there in a corner, I'm sorry, and um, I didn't do much. And all of my other teachers like didn't do anything about it, but she pushed me, and she kept making me do something. And one day I got called down to the guidance office, and they were like, well, your teacher's pretty concerned for you, and it stuck out to me. She was the only teacher that said something that I didn't want to try, I didn't want to do anything. And from her climbing this mountain, it helped me shape one of my most life-changing things. I didn't even share with her yet, but now you're going to hear it. Um, but she brought in a woman who did the climb with her. And when she came in and she told us something about don't put everything into the books, you know? you got to go outside, talk to strangers, be happy. And in that moment, I realized I'm a senior in high school. I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. 
I thought I knew. I took a lot of marketing courses outside of school and colleges. I work for a major marketing company. I don't meet a lot of 18 year olds who make the amount of money that I'm making or I was working for the companies that I'm working and doing the work that I'm doing. And it made me realize I don't want to do this, you know? And the whole day after she left, I was like, I have to find my own mountain. And maybe it's not what I thought it was. I have to find it. But by her climbing this mountain, it helped me shape. I would have gone to a four-year university studying I didn't want something I didn't want to learn. And by her climbing this mountain and bringing in someone to share her experiences, I am so grateful because maybe I could have gotten it from anywhere else. Maybe my mother could have told me or my sisters could have told me, but they didn't. And it was from her. And that is something I'm really grateful for. And you don't have to answer or reply. Uh, I'm not expecting it to, but it's just something I want you to consider because I can't really imagine it coming from anyone else. So thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Morley. I live at 25 Lewis Street. Um, and I just wanted to pose a, a, a thought. Um, I kind of feel like this situation uh, seemed to get really sort of out of hand and suddenly became like um, to us parents on the outside, like there was a big battle of wills about who was gonna, you know, kind of win this fight. And so um, I'd just like to propose that you think about not um, looking at this as like how do we win or how does this, um, you know, how does this battle get solved, but uh, more from a cooperative standpoint, like what's the best that we can do um, to resolve the, the situation upholding whatever the rules are um, for the board and for personnel, but also um, honoring this amazing teacher. Um, sorry. <laughs> I cry at everything. Um, who? Um, and embarrass my daughter when I do. Um, really has been one of the best teachers my daughter's had in, um, in a, a school district with a lot of amazing teachers. And she's really, I mean, she sang in, in class today well, which is um, unheard of for my quiet, um, shy little ninth grader. So I'd just like you to consider, um, you know, how can we solve the problem? not how do we figure out who wins. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Zoe Morley. Um, I'm, I'm a ninth grader here, and uh, I'm one of Madame Goslin's students. Um, no other teacher has uh, inspired me the same way she has. Um, I did not like French in middle school. It was my least favorite subject. I went to it very scared. <laughs> um, I was not a fan of public speaking, and I still am not. But uh, I have grown in her class, and the way that she's impacted me in uh, these past few months is like, a really big amount. Um, and uh, just think of the ways that you would be uh, taking away from future students uh, who would not get to uh, learn from her if you take her away from the students. Hello, my name is Renuka Kulkarni, 37 Emily Road, Far Hills. I'm a parent. Uh, my daughter came home first day of her school and she told me she does not like Ms. Goslin. Uh, 
And I was, I was surprised. And then, but I saw her reading more French, watching French movies. We were talking about it. And then back to school night, I met Ms. Goslin. I said, what's there? She's challenging you. She's good. Why don't you like her? And that's when I realized, yes, she's challenging her. Yes, she's making her study more. So, and seeing my daughter do better uh, made me proud. I like to meet a teacher who didn't say, thanks for showing up, what you're doing is good, but she was pushing my child to do to her best potential, and I'm very proud of that, thank you. And uh, my child took her, wanted to go to the tri trip to Quebec, all by herself, that was her first trip alone, far away from uh, home, a teaching experience for both me as a parent and her, and both of us learned not to use cell phone, not to text for one week, that was a learning thing, and I have brushed up my French eight years, uh, after eight years, uh, thanks to her, because she would not let me talk to her anything but French. And then cuisines, different cuisines. She exposed her to different cuisines, different cultures. And I, in fact, I wrote to her saying, thank you, you are an inspiration. There are many teachers, many good teachers, but someone who pushes the kids, pushes the boundaries, teaches them something different than the textbook is important. That's what our kids need. Look at this, how many kids will leave their homework or their TV or their phone and show up and come to meetings, a board of ed meetings, to support a teacher. So that itself should show you these kids are here to fight for what they believe is right or wrong. And that's, the teach, that's what we want to teach our kids, to stand for what they believe in and fight for it. And no textbook, no teacher does it. It's someone who inspires them. And again, thank you for doing it. Uh, please make the right decision. You know the rules, like I said, I don't know the rules or regulations, but uh, let's encourage uh, teaching our kids to think outside the box and be the best they can. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hari Narayanan. I live in number 12 Hudson Drive. I'm father of Srija. Srija is basically somebody who has never done anything like this. She's a happy-go-lucky child, and she rolls with the punches. And it's inspiring to see her come in crutches here and take, a, take up the cause for her teacher. And I don't, like I myself being in management, it's not something that you find often. 